Okay, so today is July 31st, and yesterday, let's see, yesterday I received a word from the Lord um, before church, and it was just like a busy church day, um, and I just never had a chance to record it, but today I didn't really receive a word from the Lord. I did get like a lot of revelation in the night and just teaching at night. I don't know if any of you have ever had that happening happen, but I just had to like get up around three in the morning and just write down the things um, so that I could try to remember and not forget. And uh, today I just spent time worshiping and I just felt like there was interference, like a block. So I just spent time with the Holy Spirit, asking the Holy Spirit to reveal to me, you know, anything that was hindering my communication with the Lord. And, and actually to my surprise, cause I thought I was doing okay, uh, revealed a whole bunch of stuff. So I just spent time with the Lord um, just realizing some of those things, repenting for some things, um, asking to be filled with the Holy Spirit anew in different ways, asking for an increase in faith and deliverance from fear of man and, you know, just those kind of kinds of things. Um, and just like <sighs> that kind of stuff. So that's what happened today. And um, I felt like the Holy Spirit wanted me to talk about some of the revelation I was having and I've been feeling kind of nervous about making this video because I just don't really like have an order like usual you know um, like this is usually how I feel when there's some kind of lesson that he's taught me that he wants me to share and I'm like I don't know if I can put this into words um, because it's my experience and some of these things are taught in the spirit and it's like it's just difficult sometimes to translate so I'm gonna try my best and um, you know I was nervous and I was trying to like think of the things and go over the things I wrote out this morning at 3 in the morning and I was just like God I feel overwhelmed by this um, and he said just don't worry about it just go out there and do it and I'm gonna give you the words so I'm gonna trust that that's gonna happen so the first thing um, that was on my mind last night that came back to mind on the 29th uh, I read the part that said, um, I am that amazing, and I kind of laughed in the last video, and I just wanted to explain that a little bit further because there was something that was happening right then. Um, you know, a lot of times when I'm receiving a word, my mind will drift off because I'll start to process something that he said, and he'll redirect me and tell me to process it later, but just for now, like, focus, listen, write. But this time he didn't correct me. And um, so I kind of went off on a tangent in my mind. He was saying, it's all by design. You are my design. I am that amazing. But what happened in real time is I kind of stopped. It's all my design. You are my design. And my mind started to wander and think about different things that he's been revealing to me over time and how I keep having this, this sense these bread this breadcrumb trail that's been laid out before me and they're like milestones and he'll like have something in place to help me understand later an experience that happens he'll have something taught to me that i don't get that later the holy spirit gives me a revelation for and it like sets it up and i just keep having this experience over and over i don't know if you guys have that happen I imagine you do because I think it's a way of God and it just reveals to me time and time again how he is actually behind us and before us and above us and below us and all around us and I just was thinking Lord I was thinking of some specific examples that he did in my life and I'm thinking Lord you you are able to do that for every person on the planet like is that possible like who are you? Like, how are you this big? How are you so intimate? And, um, and I'm like, God, are you really that amazing? And he just like, and kind of chuckled and said, I am that amazing. And, um, and then I looked up the word amazing and it means causing great surprise and wonder, astonishing. Like, how astonishing is our God really? Like, 
I feel like I just grasp it like this much and it's blowing my mind. And I know it's even bigger than that. I think it's just so much more mysterious and wonderful and grand than than we can see and comprehend and hold, you know? And um, so I wanted to give an example of that. And because he was bringing, bringing some things back to mind and it has to do with the journey to the cross. So like connecting all of these pieces, I'm just going to say some of the things that were being revealed to me at night and hope that it comes together. Like, I don't think I'm there yet, but the pieces are there coming together. Um, let me pause and think about this. So in the, in that message, he talked about being the master builder. He talked about, again, revealing the way to the cross. And remember a few videos back, he gave that assignment about find the way to the cross, the way to the tabernacle and the way to deliverance. And so he was zeroing in on the cross again. So those were some of the things that were coming together in my mind, I think. <laughs> um, so I was thinking about what it means, what the cross means. And I was thinking about the tabernacle. I was thinking about how we are now, like embody the tabernacle, that Christ is the tabernacle. He said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. So he was literally telling the people that he was the temple, the tabernacle, because the outer court was, is, was in rabbinical tradition called the way. And the holy place was called the truth and the holy of holies was called the life so he was literally saying to them that he was he was all of it and then i was thinking about the verse pick up your cross and follow me so just think about what all of these things mean and he was giving me pieces of all of this all night long and uh who it's it's hard it's coming together but it's hard to like put it together in a simplified way. So when you really get something, you can say it in a simple way and I'm just not there yet. So that's why I'm intimidated by this because he wants me to talk about it. So um, I'm gonna backtrack a little bit and I'm gonna talk about the part with how amazing he is. How he takes our ugly, disgusting, broken past and somehow he creates something out of that and even something beautiful. And he takes the weakest spots, the impossible places, and somehow that becomes part of our ministry. Like only God can do this. And for me, a very broken part was being able to say that I'm a child of God. And that was revealed to me when I was at a conference and people were singing they were singing, um, I am a child of God, and I could not say it. I was having this really, like, I was having a crisis moment. I couldn't understand why I was trying to sing, and the, I could not. When I get to that part, it just could not come out of me, and I started to feel like I needed to flee. I was having, like, this huge war. Something was being revealed and exposed and surfacing. Something really deep and scary. And um, I didn't know it was there. And uh, so I'm going to backtrack and I'm going to talk about, again, you know, some of you have seen testimony, so I'm going to try to keep it brief. Um, but, and I've talked about it in several videos, but there's new people joining all the time, so I'll, I'll say it briefly again. A little over a year ago, uh, yeah, um, about a year and a half ago, maybe, I was, I was crying out to the Lord because my life was just a broken mess and I just couldn't see any, any way it could get better. And I, I was repenting for the mess I'd made. And it's the first time I really looked at my life, looked at my choices and just repented and took ownership. Like I have really screwed this up. <laughs> and, um, you know, some of it 
you know, I kind of had a victim mentality and I like to blame my husband, but I wasn't leaving him, but I like to blame him because, you know, he was the one that was doing the drugs and looking at the pornography and, um, destroying my life. But I did not feel like I had the strength to leave. I did not have the strength to start all over again. I just couldn't see that happening. I just did not have it in me to, and it felt like more brokenness if I left, you know, I'd have to go through all of that again and, um, take my son and break him. He loved his dad. He loved his home. You know, he's too young. He knew we were fighting all the time, but he was too young to understand the core issues of just how different our worldview was and how different, um, I thought, you know, our values were. And just things like the TV always being on and the, the quality of shows and just the differences, like the things that just I really didn't want to look at or listen to, he had no problem with and he kind of ruled the house and like I just felt so trapped and just so like, how is this ever going to resolve? And I was just, you know, crying out to the Lord. And you know, I repented and I, and I asked the Lord, I know that you created everything. Like I don't see anything else that makes sense. Like I know you exist. I know you did all of this. I know you are so powerful and mighty. Like I see it, but I've not experienced it in my life. Can you help me understand who you are? Can you help? me see you in a way that I understand. Are you near? Are you far? Who are you? Do you care? Is it too late for me? And I said, I need a miracle, Lord. I need that kind of power, the kind of power that just makes something out of nothing, that brings dead things to life. I've never seen that before. I've never experienced that. And uh, that was my prayer. And, and could he take me to some people that understand him correctly so that I could grow? Because a lot of times I sit in church and just think, do people really believe this stuff? Because I just don't see the power. I just don't see it. You know, the Bible talks about there being so much power to change and heal and deliver people from demons and all the things. And I just never saw it in my life. And, um, I just saw people struggling, including myself with the same old demons. And, um, and I didn't know, but around that same time, my husband also had a crying out moment and he cried out to the Lord. He was in, engaged in something he shouldn't have been engaged in and talking to demons kind of. And, um, he got really scared and it went way too far and he just cried out for help and he literally felt the Lord snatch him from the grips of hell and just tear him right out of the grips and and save him and kind of took him on a lightning bolt ride through his life and just revealed to him the Lord's great love and protection and involvement in his life that he never saw just opened his eyes to it and he has a hard time explaining what happened because he felt like people would think it was crazy. Just the whole experience of it. And he didn't really share it with me. He didn't really understand what was going on, but he knew in that moment that God loved him, that God was real because he never even thought God was real before. He thought he was like Santa Claus and just a way to control people. Um, just religion was a way to keep people under control and, and manage them but it's just like Santa Claus, not really real, just something to believe in. And, um, but in that moment he knew God was real. He knew God was so loving and he knew how incredibly involved God was. So that was revealed to him. And literally he just became a servant for the Lord, the drugs, the desires for pornography. Like even he's chewed his whole life, even that something he never thought he would give up. Like he kind of wrestled with the drugs and things, gave that up sometimes, but Chu was never even on the radar. All of it just stopped instantly. And he hasn't gone back. He's was transformed that quickly by God's love. 
Well, I hadn't experienced that. And I didn't understand that that's what happened to him. And um, so I was watching this. Once I knew, everything in our house changed. We were eating dinner together. We were He's wanting to pray together. I've never even imagined that could be possible. The TV was off. There was peace in the house. Um, you know, he was cooking, cleaning, wanting to spend such quality time with my son, painting and doing creative things and just had joy. He was just a whole different creature. But I hadn't changed yet. So all of a sudden the spotlight is on my ugliness. And I felt really betrayed by God because I thought, God, I'm the one that wanted to please you this whole time. I'm the one that tried to get him on track. I'm the one that was trying to get him to walk the right path. And you just picked him up, dusted him off. And how is my ugliness so ugly right now? I was so confused and I felt like I was experiencing the wrath of God. All my rage was being exposed. All my... Um, just the resentment and my inability to forgive. Um, there was so much, you know, and I was, I'd been going to this church and I'd, I'd been watching these people in amazement who experienced Jesus as a real person. And when they worshiped him, their arms were in the air and they were like in ecstasy with him. And just the, the real relationship the things they would say, how they experienced him day to day, the things he talked to them about. I was just like, I had no idea that was possible. And I was watching it. And one day, you know, I came home. This was before, you know, my husband started going to church with me and stuff. I was just coming home, driving home by myself. And all of a sudden, these, these praises just started bubbling out from me. Like just from being around these people, something was happening inside of my spirit. And all of these praises in English, but just coming out and out, this joy. And I didn't, I didn't know what that, that was, but something was starting to happen. And I just observed it and noticed it and thought that was different. That's never happened before. And, um... Slowly the, the Lord started to, to do a work on me, but I was talking to my friend about how I just felt like for some reason God answered my prayers is beautiful. Thank you, Lord. Why am I feeling so ugly inside? Why am I feeling so condemned? And she said to me, when you have a revelation of the Lord's deep and individual and profound love for you. You'll start to heal. And I didn't know what that meant. It didn't connect yet. But it was a breadcrumb. And because she's a spirit-filled person, because she listened to the Holy Spirit and spoke life into me. She was used, you know, used by the Holy Spirit in part of my own development. And it was, it was a divine appointment. That was such an important piece. And it keeps coming up as an important piece. It was part of the design later down the road. It's the night before my wedding. I had a vision, you know, we're supposed to get baptized in the Holy, and, um, before, you know, we get baptized and then we come out and we're in white robes and that's how we get married. And we get baptized as a family because we're, we have a new life. My son said he, the Lord picked us up out of the mud and set us on a rock. He cleaned us up. My son, who's just now six, could see the difference. He experienced the salvation of our family.
asking, but I still hadn't had, you know, I, I was getting better. Things were happening, but I still hadn't had that profound revelation yet, and I didn't know that. So the night before the wedding, well, let's back up. I went to a conference, an all-women's conference, and they were worshiping there. And they were singing about, the song was, I am a child of God. And, like, my voice quit. Like, I was trying to say the words, and my body physically would not let me get the words out. And I was so uncomfortable, and I was having, like, this crisis. Why can't I say these words? Does that mean my biggest fear is, is that it's too late for me? You know, I messed up too much. There's too much shame. I really shouldn't even be alive. God can't really create. Like, he couldn't have created me in those conditions. I can't really be his child. And I, I couldn't say the words. I didn't know I was so wounded there. I wanted to flee. I wanted to run. I, like, li literally was looking for an exit. I just felt like I had to get out of there. It's hot. I was so uncomfortable. And so I just noted that experience. The night before my wedding. And we'd been going to this church together as a family for a while. Growth was happening. Some things changed right away. Some things are long game. This, this part's a long game for me. And... For my husband, it's abandonment issues for him. And uh, that's a long game for him. It's going to be his greatest strength in time. Um, for me, it's about adoption. And I didn't know that. And that, that conference actually was about identity, and it was largely about adoption, actually. Um... You know, like the, the wilderness experience, uh, leaving slavery, and then being adopted, eventually being adopted as sons and daughters and receiving your inheritance in the promised land. So that's what it was all about. And um, so I learned things, you know, more breadcrumbs leading up to the big moment. So the night before my wedding, the Lord told me I was going to give my testimony at my wedding. And... I was wrestling all night long with him and he's putting words in my mouth and things were being proclaimed so boldly but I didn't understand how it was going to happen because I didn't know what my testimony was things had changed but I didn't know what my testimony was like Lord I don't think I have a testimony I don't like you've answered my prayers but I'm not there it's raining <laughs> um, And let's see, it must have been two nights before the wedding because the night before I, we were at the location and the pastor there that was going to do the ceremony, I just told him, you know, what the Lord had said and I, as we were talking about what we were going to say and things under the order of how everything was going to go. So we were going to just do our normal church service, like do our praise and worship and then go out get baptized and then we're doing it you know as part of our church we invited just a few people in our in our family and a couple of friends and I said the Lord wants me to give my testimony and I just don't think I have one I'm nervous about that um, it's tomorrow and uh, but I know that's what he wants he we wrestled with it you know all night and um so he put his head on me and just prayed boldness over me I went home, I slept, same thing, but I was, you know, surrendering, okay, Lord, but you're going to have to give me my testimony, you're going to have to show me what to say, and um, I got up, and I was, I was looking at the Bible, trying to write some things out, and I was just like, you know, there was, there was this one psalm that really stood out to me that I wanted to share, and I was like, Lord, where is that psalm, and he said, Psalm 138, and I looked that up, and I was like, no, that's not it, but he's like, read. And it was about be being bold and stout-hearted. And I was like, oh, wow, that's awesome. Because, you know, my pastor just prayed that over me. And I just started to feel like 
like he was there and he was talking to me. And I kept reading, and I thought I was still in the same chapter, and I kept reading into Psalm 139. And the night before, um, my friend, who's also like the pastor, um, the two of them have the home church, and she had sent me a song called Love Note. And I thought, you know, like that's a nice song, but I didn't really like the girls. I was just listening to it like a song. I didn't really like connect, understand the lyrics really. Um, I thought they were different because the girl was singing like she was God and her voice was a little weird and the melody was like just a little bit, not cheesy, but just a little bit, not really something that I would listen to, I didn't think. So I listened to it and I was like, well, that's kind of a nice song, but I just didn't really get it or think I'd ever listen to it again. I didn't think much of it, but that was nice she sent it to me though um, and was thinking about me. And uh, this person also sent, would send me things and they would always be profound. You know, they, they would always be on target, you know, because she also walked in the Spirit. And the Sp Holy Spirit would prompt her to, to do these things. There's another breadcrumb. So I'm reading, you know, in Psalm 138. I didn't know I went into Psalm 139. And all of a sudden... It, you know, starts talking about, I'm above you, I'm below you, I'm behind you, I'm before you, like those kind of words. And I was like, where have I heard that before? And I was like, oh, that song, Love Note. So then I, I started, and then I kept reading, and I turned the page, and I have these questions, and all of a sudden they're answered, and all of a sudden I'm experiencing him knowing the thought before I had the thought. I'm experiencing him as I'm reading it. I can't remember what was happening, but I was experiencing that truth. Like I saw that he saw that I would have this thought before I had the thought and then it would answer it. And that kept happening. And I was getting blown away and emotional. I was starting to, like, he's right here talking to me. And then I turned the page and it's about being knit together in the mother's womb. And I all of a sudden got it. Just all the breadcrumbs leading up. And I had my profound experience where all of a sudden I felt him present with me. Inside of me. Talking to me. Showing me. Teaching. Revealing. And I felt just washed in his love. That he really did knit me together. And what it means what Jesus did when he brings us back to the Father's love. How much the Father loves us. That he sent Jesus. What the cross means. The way to the cross. That was part of the revelation. So I always knew Jesus died for my sins. But I didn't have a profound revelation of how personal that was to unite me with my creator who loves me as an individual who sees me who's present with me who's all around me who's closer than my own skin who's inside of my thoughts who's directing my thoughts who's directing my life I got it and I went back and I listened to that song and I just wept because in the song it says baby I'm all around you and when he called me baby, I started to heal. So, I'm going to have to take this video somewhere. Hold on. Okay, sorry about that. So, anyway, so that happened. So I felt like I was brought to Jesus. Brought to the, to the cross in such a profound way. Like, a life-changing, I'll never be the same, my healing can begin kind of way. Then I was baptized. Then the Holy Spirit revealed to me a baptism of the Holy Spirit because somebody asked me, do you speak in tongues yet? And I was like, should I? Because I didn't grow up that way. I didn't know what that meant. 
And so I had to talk with the Lord about it. I'm like, Lord, I don't have anything against it. You know, I've heard some of the people have a prayer language a little bit here and there. And it didn't offend me. It didn't seem out of place. But I didn't really think it was anything that would ever happen to me. And um, so I just talked to the Lord and I'm like, you know, if you want that for me, I'm, I'm willing to receive that. And um, nothing, you know, if you want to do that to me, basically. And I sat there for a while, nothing happened. So I just thought, well, it's probably not for me. And a little while later that day, I was out picking blueberries and listening to, to some YouTube videos. And um, I, was, I was listening to a teaching by Derek Prince about the end times. And I never heard of Derek Prince or listened to him. And um, I thought, wow, he's a really, really good teacher. So I saved, I subscribed to that channel. And later that day, a video came up about exercising the gifts of the Holy Spirit, which I didn't know really much about. And I saw that the first one was about receiving the gift of tongues. And I thought, oh, maybe the Lord has something more he wants to teach me about that. So I, I just set aside some time to be alone in the bedroom and, um, and listen to that. And I paused the video to process part of what he was saying. When I closed my eyes to just think about something he had said, I saw an altar. And I thought, in the spirit, I saw an altar. And I was like, close my eyes again. I'm like, is that an altar, Lord? And I just knew, just led by the Holy Spirit, to climb on the altar and just open my mouth and let him pour in and then me receive. And maybe that's what he was talking about in the video, you know, like being an active participant. Like it's not something that happens to you. It's happen something that happens between both of you in a relationship. There's a, a process of receiving. So, so much, so many times I think we're taught like that God just does stuff to us, but he wants us to understand what's being done. And he wants us to be involved in the process of it, to exercise it, to practice it, to receive it. And so, um, looks like there's something. So, it looked like a bug. Um, so then, I, I believe that's when I got baptized in the Holy Spirit. Because I start all of a sudden, remember that bubbling out, maybe that was a baptism, but I don't think quite yet. I had that same feeling, but this time it was in another language. And that went on for like 45 minutes until I had to go use the bathroom. And I stopped because I didn't want to scare my family. So it's not a possession. It's something you can turn off if you want to. The Holy Spirit doesn't possess us. It is something that you, you can, like he explained, that once you have it, it doesn't go away. And you use it. You practice it. It's there for you. It's a gift. But it doesn't possess you. So I went outside to shut the chickens in, and I tried it again, and it was still there. And this was singing, and the first, he, in the next video, he said about prophesying, to seek even higher gifts, like prophecy. And I thought, okay, and the Bible does say to do that. So I started speaking in tongues and then prophesying. I would speak in English right after and see what came out of my mouth, and it would come out one word at a time. And the first thing that came out is, Father. This song is for you. And how many times does he say, sing to me a new song? So it's just such an intimate journey. Then he tells me to start getting up with him in the mornings. So when I got baptized in the Holy Spirit, that was the oil anointing. Then he leads me to the next step, which is get up in the mornings with me, Melissa, and start journaling. We're going to practice this. You're going to start hearing my voice. And I said, okay, Lord. He said, I want you to get up before your family because he is respectful of our families. He wants us to love our families well, but he also wants intimate time with us. And he makes it possible. So I start getting up in the mornings with him. And immediately he starts giving me so much. 
So when he said, find the way to the cross, remember we, we went, he wanted me to share that again in a new way, because now I see it, because he taught it to me a few videos back, right? Jesus, I, when he said, find the way to the cross, find the way to the tabernacle, find the way to deliverance, I went to the Via Della Rosa, you know, and I was walking through the whole, like, road to the cross experience, and he said, no, that's not what I mean. Go back to when Jesus was baptized and start there. Jesus got water baptized. You didn't have to find Jesus at the entrance, right? You didn't have to find Jesus first because Jesus is Jesus. But then the Holy Spirit came down and the Father said, This is my Son in whom I'm well pleased. So he got... That's when he got his anointing, he began his journey to the cross at that, at that point. And he started to live out his purpose, the design, the Father's design for his life. Jesus is our example of that. Jesus was 100% God. He was 100% God, Son. He was divine and he was human. But he gave up his divinity to be human and walk out what he's calling us to walk out and the Lord without man showing me and teaching me the Lord laid the breadcrumbs he is a God of order and he showed me in my own walk and he put it in that order first I had to encounter Jesus so then we go to the the tabernacle and the first thing you do is you walk in. That's your profound revelation of who Jesus is. And you believe in him and you receive him as your Lord and Savior. And you profess, you know, that he, he is the Son of God. And he died and he rose and you die with him, you know. And, and he gives you new life. And he bridges the gap. And he paid the penalty. He's everything. So he is the door to the tabernacle. He's the narrow way in. And once you're in there, you've got the the altar, which Jesus, you know, when he died on the cross, he was the sacrificial lamb. He paid the price for all of our sins there at the altar. Then you go to the water baptism. Then you go to the oil anointing. Then you're invited into the holy place where you get your individual specific tasks for your life directly from Jesus. In the holy place, there's, there's the bread, there's the Holy Spirit lamp, and there's worship. We were, we were created to worship, and the reason those people could worship Jesus so intimately is because they went in that order. They, they were invited in. It wasn't out of power and might. A lot of people put their own calling onto their own life. Or they try to find it in man's teachings. But it's by the Holy Spirit. He reveals to us who God is. He reveals to us who we are, our true identity. I hope that this is coming across. But these, you know, these are things that we've been talking about. But he was putting it together and telling me to share those experiences of my life as an example of how he does it because I didn't know and you know maybe some of you know probably a lot of people know but I didn't know man didn't teach me that the Holy Spirit taught me that And if man taught me I wouldn't have got it man told me those things but not until Holy Spirit gave me my own revelation of what that meant and I experienced it with him did I receive it. Does that make sense? So anyway, those were some of the things that he's been talking to me about. I'm going to stop the video to see if there's, there's parts I missed. So I stopped the video so many times I can't remember if I, if I reminded you that Jesus said that he was the way, the truth, and the life. 
that he, um, what the, the Jewish people at that time understood he was saying, he was saying he was the tabernacle. Because in rabbinical tradition, the tabernacle, the, the outer court, excuse me, it was um, called the way, and the holy place was the truth, and the holy of holies was the life. So he was literally saying to them that he was the tabernacle, there was no need for it anymore. That's why they were so offended and just could not understand it. It just blew their minds because they had religious minds and they couldn't receive the new thing. And so now Jesus is telling us that he is the tabernacle. Our bodies are the tabernacle now that he lives in. Pick up your cross and follow me. What does that mean? What is your cross? So cross, I looked up some things about cross. It's unspeakable pain, humiliation, and suffering. So that's, you know, what I've always thought of it. You know, carry the cross, carry the burden of Christ, carry Christ's cross. But it says, pick up your cross and follow me. It's also a symbol of infinite love. And then you put those two things, suffering and infinite love together. And the thing that's closest to that to me is parenthood, right? It's like such a wonderful, awful thing. Every step of the way, you know, from birthing the child, loving the child so much, and then the the terror of messing it all up, and the, the grief of that, and the... Huh, just the fear of how much you love this person and the fear of um, being responsible for their life and just those you know the scary thoughts and all of that like it's just like a wonderful awful experience well that's what carrying the cross is it's glorious but it is painful because it stretches us and you know we have our own purpose and it's set apart from this world Jesus is anointing, taking him to, um, to the to the cross, and, and living out his purpose, and doing that out of love, suffering out of love, the path to the actual tabernacle, going through the wilderness experience, learning how to rely on the Lord every step of the way with the manna, and being led by the the Spirit, and um, just all of those things we talked about the tabernacles, the cross. Jesus' purpose was the cross. Pick up your cross. These are the things that it's not quite there for me to explain it easily, but it's coming to, to a head, kind of. Um, so those were some of the things that were going on in the night, and I asked Lord if he had a word for me today, and he said that I could just rest today. Um, and make this video, and you know, I, I talked about, I think, I'm confused now because I stopped it a couple times, but I talked about, I think, um, you know, I, I just spent some time with him asking the Holy Spirit to reveal some things that were inhibiting us, um, inhibiting me from hearing him easily, and just, I just felt this anxiety in my chest, and just asking the Holy Spirit to reveal what was the cause and behind that, because I'm, you know, it's not that I don't have awareness of myself, but that's always been a struggle with me, is like, I don't know things are building up. I, I hold things in until it's like this big explosion. And um, I just sometimes need help. You know, I'm so glad the Holy Spirit is our, our counselor and can reveal, reveal the things that are bothering us. We just ask, close your eyes and just wait for the answer and things start emerging. It's awesome. So anyway, I hope you found this video beneficial. Um, you know, I, I think the Lord just wanted to use my learning experience um, to aid in just like it was done for me, you know, the breadcrumbs. So you understand things as they're happening to you. Um, you can look back and be like, wow, he showed me this was going to happen and now I'm experiencing it. Um, you know, that, that he's leading this journey for all of us. It's amazing. Whew. So that was a little bit intimidating to do. I'm still not sure if if it was good or not, but I'm just going to trust the Lord that 
you know, that he gave me those things. Oh, there was one more. He revealed to me the meaning of a dream. So the Lord speaks to us, the Holy Spirit speaks to us in dreams. And there's this one dream that I had, it had like a whole bunch of different scenes. And there's like, I think three dreams now that I still don't have revelation for. And this was one of them. And I was just like, Lord, what did that mean? So the scene was, I'm in an old fashioned black car driving through this beautiful fall country wooded area. It was kind of like a park, like a narrow, almost like a walking paved, but the car was driving on it through through this just beautiful area. And I was looking out the window and my, my friend Mindy was the driver. And in my dreams, he's told me that Mindy represents Jesus because she was my first love, my first friend. She was my very first friend. And um, she's been in different dreams um, like that. And, and so she, who represents Jesus, is driving this car and I'm in the back seat. And something's playing on the radio and she keeps turning it up for me to hear and I'm having a hard time because I she, she keeps saying you have to listen to this can you hear this it's important that you listen to this and um, I'm looking out the window and I'm distracted by the wilderness and I'm having a hard time hearing and um but I know it's Anne of Green Gables it's the story of Anne of Green Gables it's playing and that was the scene the next scene, I see these people dancing on this bank, this really steep bank, in leaves out in the country on a hill, and they're dancing the cha-cha. And I think, I need to go help those people get to a different place, and I'm going to teach them how to dance, because I know how to dance the cha-cha. And um, I get there, and they're dancing amazingly, and they know more stuff than I do, and I'm just like, how is this possible, and why are they dancing on this hill? So I prayed about these things, and the Lord said, what is Anne of Green Gables about? What's the story about? It's about her adoption. And I was so distracted by the wilderness, I couldn't hear his voice trying to teach me about who I was. And then in the next scene, I asked him for revelation about that. It took me a while to get what he said, and he said, well, they wouldn't have done well on a smoother surface, on a, in an easier condition. So because they learned to dance in a difficult condition, they could now dance anywhere. They could dance in, in a place that looked like it was impossible to dance. He alone knows the conditions that it takes to get a person to be able to dance anywhere. I don't know. That was amazing to me. And at church on Sunday, it was all about listening for God's voice. And part of the confessionary, confession prayer was, um, you know, sometimes we get so distracted by all the noise that we don't hear your voice. And, and the whole service, like he's even doing stuff in, in my church, like my morning church that's um, Presbyterian. Now we've got these Holy Spirit signs at the front of the church. And the Holy Spirit's being invited into all the services, and, and now they're teaching the, the congregation how to hear His voice. And, we're, and it's more Holy Spirit focused. And there's been opportunity for prophecy. It's preparing the people to start to hear prophecy. I'm like, no person did this. This was an impossible thing. This was something I never even could foresee. And it's happening. And if He's doing it here, He's doing it everywhere. He's doing something. He's doing something awesome. So, anyway, I like I said, I hope that those pieces, you know, give you things to think about, and um, maybe you'll see see the can like the thing that I'm missing to tie it all together and put it in the comments, or maybe that's coming up soon. Um, but this video is probably really long. I don't know. There's several pieces I'll put together. I love you, and I hope you have a great rest of the day, and I'll see you in the next video. Oh, I was also thinking, like, you know, it's interesting his, maybe this is the pattern he says to notice. I'm going to, like, my dream is to go back through all of these messages and type them up and spend time with them. It's all happening so fast um, that it's, I don't know that I'm grasping all the things. And um, I just want to see, like, maybe the pattern is, like, I'm coming, I'm coming, I'm coming. 
Um, the day is now. Let me teach you some things. I've got your attention. I'm coming. I'm coming. I'm coming. Let me teach you some things. I've got your attention. Like maybe that's the pattern. I don't know. I know he's coming. I know there's urgency, but I know he's still doing something. You know, it's not quite there. It's not birthed yet, but we're in the season of that. So it's exciting. Um, it's terrifying. It's, you know, <laughs> it's those things. It's infinite love mixed with Wow, God, um, but here I am, and use me, and I'm yours, and I love you, all of those things. All right, we'll see you, we'll see you soon. Have a great afternoon. All right, here's the word received yesterday, July 30th. Melissa, the time chosen for my return is now. I am coming, my children. You do not need to wonder. I am going to do all that I have promised to do. The end is going to be better than the beginning. It is going to turn hearts. People will find me in new ways. They will experience me anew. Melissa, the end is really the beginning. The end is where we unite as one. The whole body unifies. The whole world will see. They will know that I have done it. Melissa, the last days are here. You are living in the final chapter. You are experiencing me anew. You are learning who I really am, and you are becoming who I created you to become. You are talking to me like never before. You are hearing me like never before. Did I not tell you this would happen? Did I not say you would listen for me and talk with me throughout your days? Follow my voice. I am doing this new thing. It has begun. My spirit is going to pour out. It is going to spread like fire. The church is going to wake up. The people are going to return to me. It is all happening. It is underway. The last chapter. The final season. The greatest story ever told. The beginning and the end. It's all happening, children. I am your father. I am training you up. I am lifting you higher. I am pouring out my spirit. Hear me, sons and daughters. Hear me speaking to you in your ear. Learn my ways. Learn to sense me all around you. I am closer than your own skin. I am yours and you are mine. Lift me up. Worship me. Cry out to me. Lay your burdens at my feet. I am coming. Rest. Trust. Forgive others. Tell others. I am Jesus and I come to set the captives free. Sons and daughters, look up for your redemption is here. It is like the days of Noah. He knew because I told him. He was listening. Follow my voice, children. Follow me and search for the answers. Seek me. I will show you great and mighty things. Total annihilation, total desolation. The world is about to change. The world is about to wake up from its slumber. The world is about to be shown the truth of who I am. They will soon know I am the Lord God Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. They will soon see all I have done to show them the truth of who I am. Out of my mercy, they can be saved. Sing songs to me, children. I am doing it. The new thing is happening. Sing songs of renewal and deliverance as you step into all that I have for you. You are going to be amazed. You are going to really get to know me. You are going to feel my love for you so strongly. You will see. You will hear. You will be able to tell time. Melissa, deliver these words and tell them I am not sleeping on the job. Tell them I am doing it and I am about to burst through with such magnitude the whole earth will tremble and kneel. Come to me now, children. Come to me and abide in the love that surrounds you. You are my children. You are safe. You are my beloved. Who can snatch you out of my hand? Take time to talk with me. Are you afraid? Do you doubt, my children? I already know all of your thoughts. I know everything about you. Place it all at my feet and begin to believe. Believe I am who I say I am, and I will do what I have said I will do. Go now, practice this. Learn to walk in this way. Did I not tell you? to ask, seek, and knock? Will I not give you the desires of your heart? Do you desire me? Do you long to hear my voice? Let me begin to reveal the secrets. Let me begin to instruct you in this new way. I am the Lord and I have given you this task. Children, you can learn to hear me. Believe, trust, hope, do not fear. Rest, it will happen. I love you, my children. I am training you up. It is me, not by might, not by power, but by my spirit. I will do this rest and then the scripture i'll put in the notes hebrews 4 6 through 8 
Deuteronomy 2, 6 through 8, 2 Timothy 2, 6, Galatians 6, 4. And then I heard, greater is he that is in me. Then Philippians 4, 6 and Philippians 2, 13. Then I heard generational sins. And then I heard seismic activity and big letter names. And I looked that up and I actually found something really easily that happened on July 29th. That was very interesting. Um, final countdown. Single-handed. Solar flares. It's all coming. And then I think I heard let's go team. Psalm 54.4. Then I heard breaking dawn. Ephesians 2.6. 1 Corinthians 8.2. And 1 Corinthians 4.16, Mark 5.8. And then I heard Beetlejuice, and I looked that up, and that is um, a star that's about to supernova, and that was a prophecy a while back, so that was interesting. Song of Solomon 4.6, Beatitudes and Born of the Spirit.